Washington's Brian Todd is here. Tell us about these latest, I mean, truly massive war games. They are massive, Jim. The Russians are calling this their biggest staging of war games since the fall of the Soviet Union. And this could not come at a more opportune time for Vladimir Putin. The Russian president is under fire at home. He's feeling the heat from the U.S. over election meddling and possibly more sanctions. Putin and his Chinese counterpart are eager to display their alliance tonight and send a clear signal to Washington. Soldiers repel from helicopters. Combat jets take flight. Tanks roll through the eastern Russian countryside. This is Vostok 2018, which Russia calls its biggest war games since the fall of the Soviet Union. More than 300,000 troops, 36,000 vehicles, 1,000 aircraft, warships cruising offshore. The militaries from Russia, China, and Mongolia in a high-tech, heavily armored muscle flex. A massive, ambitious exercise staged by Vladimir Putin and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping, who've come to Vladivostok to witness the event and send a signal to their joint rival. Instead of uh, letting this image of Russian-Chinese, you know, endless rivalry uh, prevail, this is the Russians and the Chinese signaling, no, we're working together, stay out of our turf, America, Japan, South Korea, the West, right? Uh, we can handle things, we can defend ourselves. Putin and Xi are enjoying this so much, they staged an event to make pancakes together, sprinkle them with caviar, and have a vodka toast. Asked today if he's worried about a future military alliance between Russia and China against the United States, Defense Secretary James Mattis said, quote, I see little in the long term that aligns Russia and China. But experts do see ominous possibilities. For an American, what kind of a security concern would you take from this? So both militaries are definitely benefiting from working together. They're learning how to share intelligence. They're learning how to operate together. They're, they're basically understanding each other better militarily. Um, and that could definitely benefit either country, whether together or separately, in any potential conflict with the United States. This show of might also benefits Vladimir Putin at home. Putin's dealing with some of the loudest, most embittered protests against his rule that he's ever experienced. Millions of Russians upset with his plan to raise the minimum age when Russians can start collecting their pensions. Analysts say Putin knows Russians will likely view him more favorably if he emphasizes his presence at these war games. For the Russian domestic audience, the idea that Putin reminds them of the stuff he's good at, defending us and our territory, you know, uh, protecting the interests of Russian citizens and of Russian businesses and, and Russians around the world, that's the stuff that he does well. But analysts say it could be that same tough guy projection and that propping up of all of his tough guy friends, which could eventually be Vladimir Putin's undoing. Russians are obviously hurting financially right now, and if more Russians get collectively fed up, their voices claiming that Putin might be siphoning Russians' money to help his corrupt friends in the military and security services, those voices could get louder, bringing more Russians onto the streets, which experts say is what Vladimir Putin fears the most. Jim? This friendship between Russia and China, certainly at the personal level, has been growing in years. Uh, worrisome implications for the U.S.? That's right, Jim. You know, Putin and Xi are said to be very close personal friends at the moment. Putin has clearly been, as they say, pivoting east in recent years, signing multi-billion dollar energy deals with China and other trade agreements. This is clearly developing now as an axis of power designed very clearly to challenge the United States. We'll see how the U.S. responds, especially in that Pacific region. Brian Todd, thanks very much.